present events on a hotel terrace, the first of four intimate exchanges, written by Alan Akebourne and starring Robin Herford as Toby Teasdale and Lionel Heppelwick, and Lavinia Bertram as Celia Teasdale and Sylvie Bell. The play begins in Toby and Celia Teasdale's garden, one sunny English afternoon in June. It's no good. I need a cigarette. I must have one. I cannot possibly get through the rest of the day without one. Or can I? Can I possibly? No, of course I can't. Not possibly. Oh, oh, Mr. Hepplewick. Nice to see you. I hope this is not inconvenient. No, no. Sylvia and I were just, uh, spring cleaning. Well, something of the sort. Midsummer cleaning. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Heavenly day. Oh, yeah. I hope it stays like this. Yeah. After that winter. Yeah. It'll stay like this till Thursday. Will it? You get a bit of cloud then late afternoon, maybe a spot of rain. That'll clear up for Friday. A bit breezy Saturday, but Sunday will be a real scorcher. Really? Really? That's just my guess, mind you. Now, what, what can I do for you, Miss... Oh, Larnmore, isn't it? Yes, of course it's Larnmore. I just come round like I promised, Mrs. Deesdale. Like you... <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. you may not remember. A few weeks ago, at the end of last term, you may recall we were talking, yourself, Mr. Teasdale and me, and you mentioned then if I should have any spare time, I should come up and have a look at your garden. Yes, of course. It was a little while ago. Now I got the cricket pitches marked and the outfields mown. I thought I'd just come up and have a look, if that's all right. Yes. Mr. Teasdale said it would probably be all right. Yes, of course. Well... There it is. Yes. Neither of us are particularly garden-minded, I'm afraid. Oh. We love sitting in them, getting all the benefits. We both loathe any kind of hard work, I'm afraid. Still, what do you think? That's a useful shed. Oh. Oh, yes, the shed. That's a mess, too, I'm afraid. It was put up by our predecessors, the last headmaster and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Cowlishaw. Now, he was a very keen gardener, Mr. Cowlishaw. He'd have been before your time. Oh, yeah. Yes, your father would have been school caretaker then, wouldn't he? He would, yeah. He's, um, still well, is he? Um, Joe? Is Joe keeping fit? Very well, thank you. He's still got his knee troubles, but he's a fine old man. Oh, yes. Is he coping without your mother? Just about. Still, it was a long illness. It was a very long illness. It was a relief to see her die, I don't mind saying. Yes. Well. Yes, we can do something with this, I don't doubt. Would you like to take a look round? Thank you very much. I mean, there isn't much. What you see is what we have. I'll make some coffee. Would you like some coffee? Or tea. There's tea. A cup of tea would be very pleasant, thank you, Mr. Teaster. Right. Tea. I won't be a moment. It'd be all right for me to go in the chair, will it? Yes, yes. Help yourself. It shouldn't be locked. <sighs> now, what's the size of this, then? It's about 
three, six, nine. Yeah, about eighteen foot. There then. Eighteen times four. She says, do four you want sugar in your tea? Just a minute, just a minute. Four, eight, two, eight, two four and three are seven, seventy-two. Do I what? Mrs. Teasdale, she says, do you want sugar in your tea? Three, yes, three sugars. Right, three. You could have told her that, Sylvie. What? I say, you could have told her I'd take three sugars. You know well enough I'd take three sugars. No, I don't. How should I know you take three sugars? How am I supposed to know? Because you do. It's nothing to do with me. Take boiled eggs in it, as far as I'm concerned. You knew. What are you up to in there, anyway? Clearing away the headmaster's empties, eh? Mind your own business. Bet he gets through a few bottles in a week. What are you supposed to be doing, anyway? I'm going to work on this, aren't I? Can't wait to see that. Tidy it up a bit for her. You were going to do my mum's front. You never did. Nah, it's only two square feet. Not worth it. Still needs doing. Concrete it over. I've done with it. Great gardening tip, that is. Is that Mr Coombs walking along there? Yeah. Looking for his wife in the bushes, I shouldn't wonder. Who's she with now? That's anyone's guess. They say up at the squash club there are more bookings for her than there are for squash courts. Everyone's at her. Have you had her? I have none. Then it's not everyone, is it? I don't play squash, do I? If I want her, I've only got to buy a racket. Anyone with a racket can have her. Better buy yourself one. Can't afford squash rackets. Yes, you can. You're just mean. You won't spend nothing, will you? Not on anybody. Not even on yourself. Not on you, certainly. I wouldn't want you to. Don't worry. You're going to get my tea. Two sugars, then. Three. We going out Friday or not? I know. Last week you said we were. Oh, I don't know what I said last week. Only if we're not, I'd like to make other arrangements, that's all. If you don't want to take me, I'll go with someone else. Someone my own age. Get out of it. Now, a couple of bags of that, then. What we got here? He went to meet me. Half the shovel. Better than none. Weed killer. I need a bit of that around here. Wheelbarrow. No wheel. Another of Teasdale's empties. Well, could start by chucking all that away. It's an awful muddle in the shed, isn't it? Just a breath. You don't mind a mug, do you? That's yours. Sylvie said you didn't take sugar. Ta. Well, what do you think? I need to buy in a bit. What sort of bits? Tools, seed, their fertilizer, that sort of thing. And there are tools in the shed. Useless. Really? No use at all. Oh dear. I don't know what to suggest for the best. It's a problem. No problem. I have to buy some more, so. No, it's not that. I just don't know at the moment if it's going to be worth them um, buying things. You see, it's um. You see, there's a possibility. My husband may be moving on. Moving on? Yes. I see. It's not certain, but... Um, You'll be moving with him? Probably. Yes, of course. Or possibly. As I, as I say, it's all quite vague. I see. So, we don't really know. I wish we did. I mean, I don't really want to discuss it, not at all. No. I mean, I don't think people really appreciate the pressures that a headmaster sometimes undergoes. I mean, there are the parents, and the children, and the staff. Well, and his family. They all mount up, inevitably, especially a private school like this. And he's also got the board breathing down his neck, and most of them are... Well, they, they don't understand about teachers. They're dedicated people, teachers. Oh, they are, they are. Well, most of them. It's the family, you see. That's always the first thing to suffer. All the pressures bottle up at work, and he brings them home with him and unbottles at home. Yeah. Literally. Well, I... Uh... And it's also a terrific strain on me, you see, because I've so very few people I can talk to. I mean, if you're the headmaster's wife, you just can't afford to be too familiar, you know. Otherwise, you get involved in all the politics. The school politics, I meant. <laughs> so, I'm afraid the poor old headmaster's wife never has much of a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> mm. 
I think you could do with some crazy paving. I'm sorry? A bit of crazy paving will look nice. Oh, oh, yes, yes, possibly. If it's well laid. You have to lay it well. It's got to be properly laid. Yes, yes, of course. So, what do you suggest? Well, I don't know. I don't know what to suggest. I don't want you to go to any trouble. No trouble? What do you suggest? Me? What do you think would be best? <laughs> well, uh, without particularly knowing all the circumstances, I'd say perhaps you should take a chance that you'll be staying, even if your husband isn't staying, and let me go ahead. You think so? Well, you'd be sorry, won't you, if you're sitting here this time next year looking at the same old mat. Mm, true. You'll be glad of me then. I would. Yeah. I could come up two or three evenings a week during the summer, an occasional weekend perhaps, keep an eye on things for you. I'd be so grateful if someone can sort it out. I've sat here staring at it day after day. You just carry on. Yeah, it's a joint effort, though. After all, it's your garden. You're the one who's going to sit in it. Yes, of course. Your garden, your money, my sweat. Their exchange. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope we don't have to sweat too much. <laughs> right then. I'll start on Saturday, if that's okay. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have the gym to see to. Is that your little boy? Gymnasium. Oh, of course. Lock it up. I'm not married. Uh uh. Well, uh. Goodbye, then, Lionel. Goodbye, Miss Teaster. Celia. Do call me Celia, if you want. Well, maybe. Maybe. You don't mind me calling you Lionel? No, I don't mind that. Cheerio, then. Cheerio, Lionel. Well, now. Mrs. T's day. Now that's better. <laughs> now we put it out the back in the dustbins and not on the washing. That will be much more helpful. Hold you go. Yes, Mrs. T's day. Stupid old cow. You do as you told. You still here? Just gone. Well? What? Have you decided? Are you coming on Friday or are you not? Well? Well. No, I don't think I am. What? I said I'm not taking you, sorry. Why not? I'm afraid I've made other arrangements. What other arrangements? Personal, sorry. You promised me you were going out with me. And you've been labouring under a false impression, haven't you? Better start sweetening somebody else's tea. Who is she, then? Never mind. Who is she? Bye-bye. Lionel, who is she? Oh, you'll find out, no doubt. You bet I will. You bet. I'll bust her bloody head in two when I find out. <laughs> I wish you'd have something to eat. Toby. I don't want anything to eat. A piece of toast, anything. I do not require anything to eat at all. Thank you very much indeed. All right. What is Heffelwick doing in there? Have we any idea? He's trying to tidy it up. Does it need tidying up? Of course it does. Oh, your family in need of a tidy shed? You can hardly get in there. Well, when's he going to do something about the garden? I thought we were paying him for the garden. He's been here three days. He hasn't come out of that shed yet. Oh, he has to get organised first. He's a useless oaf. Not a patch on his father. Did you know, he marked out the first team cricket pitch and made it a yard short. Whole yard. Bloody ball whistling round their ears. Nearly killed the openers. Well, cricket. Oh, you better watch it. If he gets his measurements wrong here, you'll have flower beds straight through your living room. What's this? Tea. I didn't want any more tea. Well, you've got it. I'm sure half your trouble is you don't eat. 
I'm sure if you ate, you wouldn't... Well, you wouldn't feel so awful in the mornings. What were you doing in the middle of last night? You were banging around for hours. What were you up to? What? What were you doing in the middle of last night? I was answering, if you must know, in polite terms, a call of nature. When you were up for hours. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I didn't realise I had a time limit. Hours and hours. Perhaps you could hang a stopwatch on the system. I'll try and speed things up for you. Don't be so unnecessary. Man can't spend his own leisure in his own toilet. God, the quantities you must drink. I dread to think how much useless liquid you take in. You said you were going to cut back anyway. I have cut back. You have back. not I've cut, cut back, back as much as I intend to. You had at least three whiskies last night. Three whiskies? What the hell's wrong with having Probably three whiskies? Probably more, for all I know. You were in the pub before you came home. Yeah, all right, all right. I had one there. That's fair enough. That's four. I bet you had more than one. You never have one. All right, five. Let's call it five, then. Large. Well, obviously large. No point in having a small one, is it? Well, there? it's too much, Toby. It really is. I'll be the judge when it's too much. They won't give you a second chance, you know, the Board of Governors. I mean, Miles really had to argue for you, Toby. He really did. And he's the chairman. He's not supposed to do that. He's supposed to be impartial. I mean, Miles Coombs is the only really good friend you've got. They were actually on the verge of voting to advertise for a new headmaster. That awful Irene Pridworthy. <laughs> She said really horrid things, apparently, about you. Did you know that? Terrible things. I don't want people saying things like that about my husband. I don't really want to enter into a discussion about Irene Pridworthy's views. I really don't. She's not a woman to be listened to on any topic. Irene Pridworthy should have been held down at a very early age and had rat poison thrust up her nose. That's all I have to say about Irene Pridworthy. Now, that is precisely what I mean, Toby. Now, that is supposed to be a headmaster talking. You're supposed to be inspiring. You're supposed to lead people. I mean, all this rat poison up noses. It's so negative. You used to be a positive man, Toby. You really did. I mean, when I used to hear you talk in the old days, I was really so excited by you. All your plans, what you wanted to see happen in education in our own school and in the country. Well, now you don't seem to want anything except to stuff things up people's noses. What's happened to you, Toby? Is it me? Well, tell me if it's me. It probably is. Usually is. I don't think we want to get into all this first thing in the morning, do you? Well, it's the only time of day when we stand the slightest chance of talking at all. When you're coherent, I may as well say it. If we talk, you'll get overexcited. Then I will probably get angry and break something. Then you will start crying. That'll make me feel rotten. So I'll go off and have another five whiskies. And the only one who'll get any fun out of that little lot will be that chap in the shed. Do we always have to shout when we talk? Apparently. We didn't shout in the early days, did we? We didn't talk to each other in the early days. I think that's half the trouble, really. If people stopped talking to each other, there wouldn't be any misunderstanding. Well, we never talk at all. I don't know what you're talking yes, about. Yes, we do, Celia, we do. Well, we sort of half talk. That's the trouble. We don't say whole things. We say half things. Because we are frightened that the whole thing might be too much for the other one to swallow. So that I go away thinking, what on earth did you mean by that? Did she mean what I thought she said? Because if she did mean what I thought she said, then I am deeply, deeply hurt. Only, of course, you didn't mean that at all. You meant something completely different. Only you didn't say it. So you'd have been far better off saying nothing in the first place. That is wonderful stuff for the sixth form, Toby, but I'm afraid I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. There you are. Absolutely prove my point. Look, Celia, you go and wash up or something. I'll be off in a minute. I'll get out of your way. I've got a staff meeting at 11. You're not going to drink this, then? No. Sylvie's washing up anyway. Sylvie? Yes. Will she come on a Saturday? She missed Wednesday because of her mother. Oh, that's your problem, I think. Nothing to do. People in there doing your washing up, people out here clearing out your shed. If I thought you meant half the things you said, I'd pour this tea over your head. I really would. He's working very hard, anyway. He's probably not working at all. Of course he is. We've agreed he's going to put a lot of crazy paving down. I hope you approve. Celia, I honestly don't give a damn if he covers the whole bloody area in owl's vomit. I'm not going out there anyway. <laughs> oh, God. 
start, Celia. Don't start. <laughs> I do try, Toby. But I know, I know, I know. It really is all over, isn't it? It really is. I don't know. I'm going to have to go away somewhere. I'll have to. If you think that's best. I'll take the children somewhere for a bit. Probably finish up at my mother's. God, what an awful thought. I thought you got on well with her. Yes, I do. I didn't really want to sit and listen to her telling me how history repeats itself. And then we'll start discussing whether it is that the women in our family all marry men who are drawn to drink, or whether it's we that drive them to it. Look, I don't want to hurt your feelings again unnecessarily, Celia, but there are a whole load of far more important reasons than you and your mother why a man should turn to drink, I can tell you. Oh, yes, all right, you tell me. What are they? OK. You want a few? You want just a few of them? Here we go. Number one. I think that the whole of life has become one long losing battle, all right? That's the first reason why I'm drinking. Number two, I find myself hemmed in by an increasing number of quite appalling people, all flying under the flags of various breeds of socialism, all of whom, so far as I can make out, are hell-bent on courses of self-reward and self-remuneration who will make the biggest capitalist look like Trotsky's Aunt Mildred. Number three, on the other hand, we have the rest of the country who don't even have the decency to pretend they're doing it for the benefit of their fellow men. Ha, ha. They're just grabbing, hand over fist, the most they can get for the minimum of effort by whatever grubby, underhand means they can muster. Number four, we have half the men <sighs> going around looking like women, half the women looking like men, and the rest of us in the middle not knowing what the bloody hell we are. Number five, and the few remaining women who don't look like men are busy ripping their clothes off and prancing around on video cassettes and soft porn discs trying to persuade us that sex can be fun. Fun, for God's sake. So the World War Three. Number six, you still with me? Yeah, Number six, we now have a police force that, according to my paper anyway, is more dishonest than the people we're paying them to arrest. Oh, for God's sake, ask them the time. Just hang on to your watch. Number seven, they've started this filthy, floodlit cricket, with cricketers wearing tin hats and advertisements for contraceptives on their boots. Number eight, you can no longer walk through the centre of any town anywhere in this country without being set upon by thousands of balls, tattooed Neanderthals. Number nine, you can't get a hotel room in London for love nor money because they're all booked up by hordes of bloody foreigners in black berets busy wilding up suitcases full of bloody explosives to blow the rest of us up. And number ten, whiskey very, very shortly is going to be ten quid a bottle. Have I made my point, Celia? I don't know what to say when you get like this. I just don't know. I suggest they brought back hanging and be sure to hang all the wrong people. I say, Heffelwick. <coughs> no, it's all right. Don't come out. <coughs> Don't come out. I hate to tear you away from our shed. But when you finish, I'd like that second 11 outfield moan. We have a first round house match on it on Monday. I don't want them wasting hours hunting for the ball around leg slip. Just get it moan, all right? Morning, Mr. Teasdale. Morning, Sylvia. Celia, I'm off now. Cheerio. If you can hear me or not, I'm sure you don't give a damn anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Teasdale. Bye, Sylvia. Oh. Mind how you go, won't you? Yeah. Didn't see you at the dance last night, then? I went with Pete Bartlett. Well, he asked me, couldn't refuse. I take it your other arrangement, so-called, didn't include the dance, then. Isn't whoever it is dance, doesn't she? Eh? Got a wooden leg, is she? Maybe she's very old, is that it? Your age, is she? Can't get about with her sticks, poor old thing. Never mind, she'd be good company for each other. Darby and Joan Epplewick. What are you on about? I'm going out with him again, you know, Pete Bartlett. Good. He's got a car. He can run you over then, can't he? You'll be sorry. You will. You'll be sorry. You will. You will. <laughs> Nano, I was wondering if you wanted some more tea. 
Oh, wooden mines, warm work. We seem to have a lot left in the pot. Here. Yeah. Is that the paving? Yeah. Very nice. You unloaded outside the gate there. I told him to put it inside, just too damn lazy. It's typical. Dear. Here. Tap. I'll get it moved in. I have to level it first, though. Yes, yes, it'll need to be level. We don't want anything too crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's heavy work. Yeah. Yes, my husband was just saying he thought the paving will look marvellous. He definitely approves of our scheme. Glad to hear it. You, um, you may have heard him just now. No, I didn't hear nothing. Oh, I felt sure you had. He gets a little excited occasionally. He feels deeply about some things. No harm in that. No, no, I think depth of feeling is a good thing. I mean, I don't think there's enough of it these days, is there? It's all terribly superficial, awful. True. Nice to see your father the other day in the village. Oh, yeah. Do you often go shopping together? Occasionally. If he feels like a push round, I push him round. He looked very fit. Oh, yeah. How old will he be now? Just coming on, uh... 72? Oh, really, very young. Not so bad. I'm sorry. You obviously don't want me chattering round you while you're working. Sorry? I'm afraid I do rabbit on a bit. You're, um, you're not a great talker, I'd have guessed, from talking to you. I can talk a bit. Oh, yes. No, what I meant was you prefer not to talk, do you? Want to talk now, do you? No, no. You'd like to hear me talk? No, I... Uh... No, what you'd like to hear me talk about? Uh, music? That interests you at all? Music? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't really mean Now, it. what sort of music do you like? You do like music, do you? Oh, me? Oh, yes, very much. Very much indeed. I'm afraid I'm mostly... I'm afraid... Afraid what? I'm a little bit square, I'm afraid. I prefer the classical sort of music, really. You don't like pop music? Well, some of it, some of it I find very interesting. Obviously exploring new, um, new sounds. I don't like any of it. It's rubbish. Oh. You like Sibelius? Oh, yes, very much, very much indeed. John Sibelius, 1865 to 1957. His violin concerto's very good, isn't it? Marvellous. And all the, uh, all those swans and things. Swan of Tunella. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you know Nielsen? Carl mm. Nielsen, 1865, 1931? No, no. Danish. He's not dissimilar. You ought to listen to him. I think you'd like him. Carl Nielsen. Yes, I will. I will. That's something to remember. <laughs> well, we have music in common, as well as gardens. Yes. My husband's not musical. No. No. So we let the children have the record player, and, of course, they play all this dreadful stuff. Oh, just look at all this rubbish. If there's anything you want, just help yourself. Heavens! Look at this. It's one of those... those things, isn't it? Chest expander. Yes. Build your muscles up. Shouldn't think you need this, do you? All this exercise. Still, if you know anyone who... Do you have any brothers or cousins? No. I have two brothers, actually. One's in Canada. He's doing frightfully well. He's a, a lawyer, married a Canadian. He's got four children. My younger brother, he's in Scotland. He's something to do with the Forestry Commission. He's just got divorced. I see him well, now and again, Joey. I hardly ever see my elder brother, Derek. I haven't seen him for years. I'm always meaning to fly over and visit them, but... My mother's still alive, very hale and hearty. Well, she's quite young, not yet 60. My father's dead, but... Um... Yes... I used to work 
for a firm that organised conferences, you know, for businesses and so on, booking hotels and travel. I love travelling. That's how I met my husband. Well, he was at a conference. That was when he was in industry and before he came back to teaching. <sighs> then I had children. I was his second wife. So, that's me, really. Very interesting. You're looking very thoughtful and rustic. Thoughtful? Not particularly rustic. Oh, I didn't mean that rudely. I live in the middle of a council estate. It's got two trees left alive on it. I went to school around the back of the shoe factory. It doesn't exactly make me rustic, no, does it? No, no. The closest I get to nature is Paul starting the school mower. I suppose that's fairly rustic. No, I'm sorry. I was pigeonholing. I shouldn't do that. Very wrong to pigeonhole people. They're themselves. Right. Right. What's yourself, then? Well, I've told you all about me. No, you haven't. You told me about your brothers, you told me about your mother, you told me about your father, your husband and your job. You haven't said anything about you. Well, I'm not rustic, certainly. What do you think I am? You tell me. Be as uh, rude as you like, I don't mind. I'm rather used to it. <laughs> Go on, pigeonhole me. Well, uh, I'd say... I'd say you were just a little bit short on self-confidence just at the moment. Uh, yes. Yes, that's possibly true. Very shrewd of you. You're a bit like a woman who's just fallen off her bicycle. How do you mean? You skinned your knees, got a bit nervous. Only thing to do in those cases is to get remounted, right? Yes, yes. Get pedalling again. Your legs working. Your thigh muscles aching. Well... Only way. Can't spend the rest of your life lying on your back in a ditch now, can you? No. I think I've rather lost the thread of this. You know what I mean. Um, extending this bicycle thing a bit further... I mean, where am I pedalling to? I mean, am I just... Peddling for the sake of peddling, or am I supposed to be peddling towards something? It depends which direction you're pointing in. Two things can start happening when you start peddling. Certain things can get nearer, and other things can get further away. If you pedal hard enough, they'll disappear altogether. But then I suppose if I pedal too hard, I could risk falling off again. Maybe. Finish up flat on my back in a ditch again, wouldn't I? Well, at least it'll be a different ditch. Different bit of sky to look at. Different cow parsley. Same position, though. No better off in the long run. Probably not. Not at all. If you feel like that, I should put your bike away in the garage if I were you. It's awfully warm now, isn't it? This has been a marvellous spell, hasn't it? Oh! Oh, you've done a marvellous job in here. That's so much clearer. So much. Yeah. This is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it just doesn't happen. Well, well, it does happen. It's ridiculous. It's like Lady... Lady Chatterley. I can read as well. I'm sorry. That's terribly rude again. Wouldn't mind being him. Not really. Yes, yes, I know. But, I mean, there was a vast class and social difference there. She had a title and he was a gamekeeper. I mean, I'm straight middle class. Middle middle class, not even upper. My father was a chemist. I mean, that's middle, isn't it? Manager of a chemist is nothing very grand. And you're a... I'm an ordinary working class lad. My dad was a sheet metal worker before he became caretaker groundsman at the school after his accident. My mother worked in the laundry and I'm a master baker. A what? Baker. I trained and got certificates. How amazing! A baker! And you gave it up? That's right. Why? I closed the bakery. I was looking round for other outlets, then Dad retired, so I thought, bugger bacon, and I took his job. Well, it doesn't pay nothing like, but then we don't need much. I can eat up at the school. Oh, it's a 
great shame, though. I'm sure there's a huge demand for good baking in this area. There really would be. I mean, look how far you have to go for a decent loaf. Absolutely miles. Oh, the scope. You open a good bakery around here, you clean up. Why did they close it? Old man Wallace trained me. When he died, his sister sold up. It was where that clothes shop was, the one that closed as soon as it opened. Oh, yes, the boutique. So the shop's empty. Yeah, oven's still there at the back, haven't been touched. You ought to take it. Take it? What with? Well, you could get a loan. Get away. And from the bank. What with? The only security I've got is my dad's wheelchair. Well, well, there must be ways. Well, I mean, I know there are. I could probably... I, I mean, not personally, but I have contacts. Yeah. No, no, I'm not being silly. I mean, it would be a proper business proposition. We'd be partners. You'd bake and I'd... Take? No, no, that's not fair. I wouldn't. I'd work as well. I'd run the shop. Oh, oh, it would be heavenly. Oh, I do adore the smell of fresh bread. Mmm, mmm. I wonder if you would at six o'clock in the morning. And then we could have donuts and cakes. Do you bake cakes? Bake all sorts of things. Fruit scones, fresh baked pies, and apple turnovers. Oh, I adore apple turnovers. Don't get too carried away, will you? I'm sorry. I realise I'm chattering on here. I'm rushing ahead. You probably think I'm slightly mad or something. But the whole thing suddenly seems to me terribly exciting. Doesn't it to you? Oh, it must do a little. Oh, yes. I mean, it... Oh, it probably isn't quite the same feeling for you, because you haven't, well, you haven't had to cope with what I've had to cope with. But, you see, if you have reached a point in your life, as I think I have, where everything does seem to have come to a terrible halt, like somebody's stopped the film with their thumb or something, all seems to be over and finished, and then, if suddenly... A little like your bicycle ride. You come over the hill and everything's endless again. Well, it was just so nice to have somewhere to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can see what sort of state I'm in, really. I don't think I realise myself. I think we could... <laughs> Excuse me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I do beg your pardon. I really didn't realise quite how much I'd let things get on top of me. Been laying in the ditch too long. Yes. Oh, dear. Oh, I wish I wasn't a woman sometimes. Why not? I don't know. I sometimes think life might be easier. I'm glad you are. A woman? Yes. Makes it worthwhile being a man. Oh. Thank you. No, I'm sorry, I think I'm going to have to go indoors, lie down or something, and have a cold bath and wash my hair. I don't know. Would you excuse me? Uh, yes, of course. Pebblewick, you useless oak. What's that? Are you going to mow this bloody pig or not? Uh, right, right here, Miss Teasdale. Yes, yes, I, I will. Right. Lion O! Lion O! Lionel! Where are you up to now, you rotten bugger? I'll break her bloody neck if I find out who she is! I really will! I turned down all my best offers for you! Lionel bloody Applewick! Rotten bugger. Nosy can twist me round. <laughs> bloody Lionel! Bloody Applewick! I bloody will! No oh, bloody kick him round the bloody to bloody right right up his stupid bloody stupid Bl Bl doesn't check the pencil. Bloody well yeah. All right, what are you doing here? No not bloody isn't fair. I give him bloody not fair. All I think he gave him he just don't he, he just don't give a bloody magnus. <laughs> I'm sorry, could you say that again? Well, you bloody wouldn't understand, would you? <laughs> extraordinary. How anyone can be that fond of Hepplewick. Quite extraordinary. Oh, what the... Oh, crazy paving, that's all we need. 
Next step, barbecue. That'll be the beginning of the end. Middle class is living it rough. Standing out in a light drizzle, setting fire to 400 quid's worth of fillet steak. Everything tasting a mess. Tremendous. Oh, it's you. Apparently. Where's Lionel Hepplewick? Lionel Hepplewick is hopefully just starting to mow the outfield of the 7 11 cricket pitch. All 18 and a half yards of it. He was doing our paving. They're getting on like a house on fire, wasn't he? The Egyptians could have done with it when they started pyramids. Get him on the job, they'd still be burying Nefertiti. I thought you had a meeting. I did, and it's over. Already? Senior prefects meeting, that's all. Suggestions for the improved day to day running of the school. Didn't take long. They made suggestions, I vetoed everything and sent them packing. That's democracy. Not having 13-year-olds telling me how to run my life. I wanted to work with you. Oh, yes. Have you been crying? No, it's hay fever, I think. You look as if you've been crying. Well, would it be so surprising if I had? No. Well... Then have you? What? Been crying. No! I said no. Can't you take no? Sylvia was. Was she? Just now, when I came back, crying her eyes out. Sitting there, muttering rural incantation. What was the matter? I don't know. Putting a curse on our shed, perhaps. No, I, I think it was Hepplewick. Oh? Fancy crying over Hepplewick. <laughs> Doesn't leave you much emotional reserve when something really important happens to you, does it? I mean, how the hell is she going to behave when she gets a flat tire on her bike? What? Bike. Oh. You all right? Yes. I'm glad you are, because you look absolutely ghastly. Thank you so much, Toby. That's so morale-raising. No, I, I meant you looked as if you'd recently been used as a footbridge or something. I, I think you're in need of a break. Oh, my God. Look, I came back. Why? Because. Well, because. Because I say a lot of things, some of which I wish I hadn't said when I've said them. To you. Well, then, I've always said a lot of awful things to you. Well, let's face it, the mainstay of our whole relationship is based on it. Me saying awful things to you and you accepting them. I can't quite think how it started, but it always has been like that, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, walking across the field there, I was trying to remember the first time I was ever rude to you. What an extraordinary comment on our relationship, isn't it? Most couples I know... When they suddenly feel nostalgic, they bring out the wedding photos, or they remember their honeymoon, or when he proposed. You want to remember the first time you were ever rude to me. No, I was just trying to remember why it all started. It started, Toby, because at one stage I don't think you actually meant all the things you called me. When you called me a grimy old insole, or whatever, it was presumably meant as a joke. Now I think you mean it. I never called you a grimy old insult, did you? Toby, you say the most awful things to me sometimes. I don't think you realise. Really? Really. I mean, that new dress I wore the other day for the school concert. Just as we were getting into the car, you said I looked like a baboon in drag. <laughs> no. No, it's not funny, Toby. It really isn't. No. I mean, it would be very different if I was terribly glamorous and confident. Then perhaps I could take it, but I'm not. I mean, some nights I get home, I look at myself, and I wonder if you're right. Oh, now, you know I didn't mean that. You don't look like a baboon. This video was uploaded to the channel Thinking Out Louder. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the Thinking Out Louder channel. Thank you. Not from this angle, anyway. Yeah, no, 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 you don't. Sorry. Anyway, that's why I came back. To say I was sorry. And it's quite the most marvellous day out there, so I was going to ask you for a walk. A walk? Yes. Where to? I don't know. The pub, if you like. Yeah, no, no, not the pub. Well, just a walk. A totally publish walk. Uh, that way. No pubs at all, that way. Don't be. Listen. Uh-huh. I think you should know, Toby, that this morning I came within a very inch of leaving you. Oh, no, Yes, I know, I know it's something we've said before in the heat of the moment, but this time it was quite considered and fairly calm. I do think if we carry on like we are, then I'll probably collapse on you or something. 
and that would be a fat lot of use to either of us. As for the children, I don't think they'd enjoy it, seeing their mother carted off somewhere. I think you're being slightly melodramatic. No, I'm not, Toby. Honestly, I don't know what it takes to make you realise. There are some mornings things look so bleak and meaningless, I just want to lie there in bed and never get up again. Oh, as natural, so do I, some mornings. No, you know perfectly well, Toby, that the reason you can't get up and the reason I can't get up are vastly different. Now, don't change the subject. You're probably tired. Well, yes, I am. But it's not that either, and you know it. So something's got to alter. Yes. I think the evidence pointing to me, isn't it? In part. Perhaps a holiday would be nice. Would you fancy that? Yes, of course I would. I've been begging you to take one for ten years. Well, well then let's do that. Just the two of us. Park the kids. Have a holiday. Go somewhere exciting. Abroad. Yes, even that, if you like. Oh, oh, I forgot. You don't like abroad very much, do you? Not much. So, if you want to go... No, I... no, this country. I'll be quite happy. Let's go somewhere where we'll both be happy. Yeah, somewhere exciting. Yes, there must be somewhere in this country. Oh, there is. I do want us to stay together, Toby. I really do. We have awful times, occasionally. At times like that, I just want to grab my things and run. But then again... You know, a few minutes ago, I suddenly got this picture of what it might be like living without you. I don't think I want that. We'll make it work, then. I promise. We'll make it work. Better go for that walk. It may rain later. Oh, hang on there. I'm just going to get some more sensible shoes. Mrs. Teasdale? Mrs. Teasdale! Lionel? Lionel? What is it? I, I just wanted to see. I, I left the mower running so I can't stop a minute. I just wanted to see. Yes, Mrs. Teasdale. That's all. Yes. Yes? Yes to the shop. Yes to anything you like. Partners. Oh. I, I'm going to be right there with you, I promise. I, I know what you were trying to say to me earlier, and I think you understood what I was saying to you. So, okay. That's all I want to see. Okay. L Lionel, I'm afraid I don't think it is. What? Okay. I don't think it can be. Not realistically. I don't quite follow you a minute ago. Yes, I know, but thinking about it well, realistically, Lionel, it was absurd, wasn't it? Absurd? I'm sorry. It's probably my fault. I'm in a rather unpredictable state at the moment, up and down, like one of those ping-pong things. Please, I beg you to forget everything I said. I behaved hysterically and irresponsibly. I'm sorry. It's all this crazy paving and the heat. Now, you go back to your mower, and I'm... Well, I've got to go out. All right? See you later, then, I hope. Bye-bye. Oh, no. You don't get rid of me that easy. Not that easy. I'm not bloody taking second bloody place to any bloody body. You wait. Just you wait. I love you. Do you hear me, Celia? I love you, Mrs. Teasdale! say this is absolutely terrific sensational i mean i couldn't have had a better holiday if i planned it myself i wish you had i mean what an exciting place this is what earth did you find it all this activity people rushing hither and thither the laughter of vivacious diners at the crowded tables mingling with the gay sound of passionate gypsy music they're all right the dizzy riot of colours, the giddy throng swirls first this way and then that. It's like the first act of Carmen out here, isn't it? The glint of sunlight on the twinkling spokes of passing wheelchairs. The merry clatter of walking frames mixing with the cheery whistle of howling hearing aids. 
and the clatter of dentures closing around stale angel cake. Now, all right. I didn't realize you brought me here to die. I'd have packed my dark suit. I brought you here to rest. That's all, rest. In peace. One week. That's all we're doing, one week. Consider yourself lucky. The doctor wanted it to be longer. If he'd had his well, way... Well, he didn't. I don't know what we're doing here at all, quite honestly. A waste of time. All I did was fall over. I just fell over. You didn't just fall What's over. What's wrong with falling over? Isn't the first time I've fallen over? I know that. Won't be the last. I'm sure. Well, then. This was a rather different sort of falling over, wasn't it? I mean, you weren't... Well, it doesn't normally happen to you in morning assembly. I don't know why you're moaning. At least you've had a warning. A little heart tremor that says, be careful. Some people don't get a warning at all. There are dozens of very sound reasons why a man should faint during school assembly. Waiter! Waiter! Oh, God. What do you want? More tea? No, I wanted a paper. A paper? Yes, a newspaper. Just because we've landed here in this geriatric Valhalla doesn't mean we can't keep in touch with the rest of the poor mortals. We could read the school's blown up. You never know your luck. Waiter! Do you think he's just ignoring us on purpose? I don't think he heard you. He's not used to us mad young things. Do you honestly mean to say you couldn't find anywhere livelier than this? Not at this time of year. Not at that short notice. Oh, well... Would you like to go for a walk? No. Well, we ought to do something now we're here. We are. We're sitting here waiting to go home again. Yes, you always were hell on holiday. I remember that from the dim, distant past on our last one. Ten years ago, whenever it was. It's no more fun for me. It really isn't. I don't want to be here. I'd much sooner be at home. Perhaps you're missing Lionel Hepplewick. Oh, don't start that. He's probably missing you. Hmm. You have to laugh. I'm not laughing. Bloody cheek. One of the reasons I sacked him. Really? It wasn't. Because of me? If I thought you'd got rid of Lionel because of me, no, I really would... No, I didn't. Would... You didn't? No. You promise you didn't? No. I got rid of him on the strength of what he, as school groundsman, had done to our first team cricket pitch. He tried his best. His best was an act of vandalism on a scale unrivaled since the Visigoths first went off on a works outing. Well, so long as it wasn't me, that's all. You're glad he's gone, though, aren't you? Well... Oh, come on! Yes. The man absolutely played the life out of you. Yes. Yes, he was a nuisance. Banging on the bedroom windows in the middle of the night. Well, he didn't know you'd be there. You mean you'd have let him in if I hadn't been? No, of course not. Shouting through the letterbox at crack of dawn? I know, I know. That nearly did kill me. I was just picking the rates demand off the doormat. Yes, I know. Don't know why you're defending him. You nearly called the police. Well, he did get obsessive. He was a lunatic. Absolute cockeyed fixation. If I ever see him again, I'll... <sighs> it must be a serious mental disorder, mustn't it? It wasn't as if you encouraged the man, was it? Was it? No. I'm saying you never encouraged him. I said no. No. It's one of those people. Quite common. They just sit down one day and pick someone out of a phone book, ring them up, tell them they just got engaged to them. Some poor bloody woman doing her morning wash suddenly finds herself engaged to a chap on the end of a phone she'd never even met. He was quite harmless, though. A man who did what he did to a cricket pitch is capable of anything. I mean, I wasn't frightened by him, or threatened. I did get irritated, I suppose, but... Well, there were nice touches. I got quite fond of the little bunches of flowers in the milk bottle. You didn't feel that at the time. Whenever I came home, I always found you crouching behind the sofa in case it was him. And he never finished my crazy paving, either. Still, I suppose in retrospect, it's quite pleasant. I mean, to feel one has created quite such a depth of feeling in someone, however misguided. Yeah, I'm sure Mussolini felt much the same way. What's the matter? Nothing. I was sitting there looking like a stuffed puffin. I was just surveying life ahead, and it rather depressed well, me. At least you've got some. According to you, I've hardly any left at all. Look, I'm going to get a paper. These waiters are obviously trained not to respond to vocal sounds or hand signals. Short of rolling coins on the floor in front of him, I can think of no other way of attracting his attention. Now, when I come back, 
Hang on to the table, because here's an exciting bit. We will go for a walk. Oh, so now we are going. We'll stroll along the promenade very gently in case I fall down. And we'll stroll back again, and if you're very good, we'll sit down in the lounge and wait for dinner while we both enjoy not having a drink. Then we'll slip up to the Arctic suite and so to bed. That's not too exciting, is it? It's no more fun for me. I'm relieved to hear it. I'm not suffering alone. See you in a minute. This is the sort of music that makes you want to jump up and dance the night away, isn't it? Ha ha, cha cha cha. Silly man. I see. I see. Hmm? What? Mrs. Teasdale. Lionel. It's Lionel, Mrs. Teasdale. Yes. You haven't forgotten me, have you? Lionel. No, of course I haven't. Lionel. Lionel, Mrs. Teasdale. What are you doing here, Lionel? Shh, Mrs. Teasdale, they can't talk now. They're watching me. They are? They watch every move you make. You can't do a thing. Who are these people? Mr. Hobjay. Mr. Hobjay? The assistant manager, him on duty. He's watching us. Oh, I see. He's just in there on the trolley. Look, I must talk to you, Mrs. Teasdale. I must see you urgently, please. I must talk to you Mrs. alone. Stop. There he is. I'm coming, sir. I'm, I'm just coming. Lionel, we simply please, can't. Please, Mrs. Teasdale. Mr. Stop. Where are you? Y yes, sir. I'll be right with you, sir. Oh, heavens. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Here we are. Oh. The Evening Chronicle. A journal as packed full of incident by the look of it as the town it serves. Local man's hat blows off. Story and pictures inside. Want to look? No. Why have you moved? I haven't moved. Oh, no, nor you have. It's just the tea things that have moved. You've stayed where you are. Are we off, then? Uh, just a minute. What? I've just... Just what? Nothing. You all right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Coming, then? Change your shoes. What? Those are your indoor shoes. Indoor Now, you shoes? know perfectly well they are. I bought them for you to wear in the hotel. You want me to go up to the Arctic suite? Yes. And change into another set of shoes? Please. You realise you're talking to a man with a suspected heart tremor? Yes. And you're proposing to send me up three flights of stairs to change from one perfectly sound pair of shoes into another? Oh, well, go in the lift, then. Use the lift. The lift is jammed full of old ladies joyriding. You can't get into it. You know that. Oh. Oh, all right. That's what life's all about, really, isn't it? Changing shoes. One man in his time wears many shoes. Oh, it's impossible. I can't... It's impossible. He's impossible. Everything's impossible. You, you can't keep chasing him after me. Tea, madam? Oh. Lovely afternoon, madam. Uh, Lionel, I don't want tea. I've had some. Have some more, Mrs. Teasdale. It's the only excuse I've got to be out here. But I can't drink any more. Please. Here we are, madam. Cake there. No, I don't want any cake. It's disgusting. I need to see you, Celia. It's urgent. It's very urgent indeed. I wouldn't be troubling you like this if it wasn't urgent. Look, Lionel, here is a note I've written to you. Look, let me finish it, then I'll no, give I it to you. No, I don't have a note. It has to be personal. Let me pour you the tea. No, I don't want any tea. Celia, I decided last night I just wanted you to know... I'm going to kill myself. No, you're not going to kill yourself, Lionel. Don't be silly. Not for me. I'm not worth it. I am. Nobody's worth killing themselves for. I'm going to drown myself off the edge of this terrace. That's a croquet lawn, Lionel. Now come back and behave yourself. <laughs> oh, please, Mrs. Tiste. See you, please. Lionel, people are watching. Now come along. Please. Yes, all right, all right. Pour the tea. I love you, Mrs. Tiste. I know, Lionel. I realise. Just so much yes. as... Yes, it's awful, Lionel. It's awful. I know how you feel. In the cup, please, Lionel, in the cup. I give my life for you, you see, Mrs. But there's no point. There's no need to. I wish that old man wouldn't keep staring at me. Now, now, to, my husband's been a little ill, Lionel. Yes, I know. And the doctor has said that he must take things quietly. It's dangerous for him to become excited. How excited is that? So I'd be grateful if you wouldn't let him see you. Well, I'll try. Oh, please, Lionel, not here. No, Mrs. Teasdale. You mustn't let him see you here. Promise. I promise, I promise. Would you like a sandwich? No, I do not want a sandwich. I've had a sandwich. I've had several. Oh, please eat, Mrs. Teasdale, otherwise Mr. Hobjay will get suspicious. Oh, to blazes with Mr. Hobjay. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Thank you, Mrs. Teasdale. Those are very nice. Well, my husband's coming back here, and then he's going for a walk. So please keep out of the way till he does. Yes, Mrs. Teasdale. I'm Lionel. very grateful, Mrs. Teaster. Do blow your nose. Yes. Don't let people see you like that. No, right. 
Oh, heavens. Mm. I don't want all this tea. What am I going to do with all this tea? Ah. You're having tea? Uh, yes. Thought you were. Doesn't time fly in this carnival atmosphere? Seems like only ten minutes ago since we were last having tea. I felt like some more. Did you? Yes. Doesn't sound like you. I'm on holiday. I want to be different. Oh, is that what people do on holiday? Be different? Right, hang on, I'll just put my shoes on the other feet. So you're not ready for a walk? No, you go on. Go on? Yes, I'll be a little while. Why? Because I want to finish my tea. I see. Are you, um, are you going to make a habit of this? Double meals? I don't know. Only if you intend eating two dinners this evening, I think I'll just join you for the second one, if you don't mind. Please, you go on, Toby, you go on. What's this? Nothing. What is it? Nothing, it's private. Give it to me. Can't keep choosing. No, it's not. Chasing after me. Would you mind giving that to me, please? It's very private, strictly private. Thank you. What the hell is it? It's a poem. Of what? I thought I'd... Oh, it's silly. I thought I'd just try and write some poetry, that's all. Because we're on holiday? Yes. Thank God we're only here for a week. That's all. Otherwise I'll finish up with a 24 stone poetess. I had you marked as a prose woman, you know. Well, there you are. If you are home first, please put gas on Mark IV and boil kettle, that sort of thing. There you are, totally wrong. Just as you settle for being married to Jane Austen, you find all along you've been living with a closet Edith Sitwell. I'll catch you up. What's the matter with this one, then, Edith? Got a bit stuck with it, have you? You can't keep chasing after me. Uh, I've started on my second tea. How am I doing? Oh, do go away. With any luck, I'll get one free. Well, that's a start. Set you on your way, Edith. Any help? Oh, Toby. Poems. I don't know what the hell you're up to, Celia, and I don't really want to know. I just wish to God you'd pay me the compliment of not treating me like a complete imbecile. I'm going for a walk. I'll leave you to your stanzas. Oh, go on. Go away. And good riddance. I hope you fall in the sea. Nasty, sarcastic, conceited man. Oh, I don't know why I bother. Tea for one, then, was it, madam? No, it was not. Thank you, madam. I have to keep bringing them out, Mrs. Teasdale, otherwise they ask what I'm doing out here. But, Lionel, I don't want any more tea. It's ridiculous. No, you see, the point is, as long as there's tea coming out here and dirt is going back, he won't be curious to see Mr. Hopchin. But he can see there's nobody else out here but me. Oh, no, he can't, you see, because he's just round the corner there with his trolley. He has to stay by his trolley because the old ladies pick up the cakes, as, as long as I let him catch a glimpse of me now and again. Uh, there you are, madam. I don't know why we're the only ones out here, anyway. Most of them prefer it in the lounge, so they can hear the music, you see. Yes, that's why we came out here. Yes. It's not quite so big, is it, Mrs. Tito? No, I haven't much time. No, neither have but I. But you must listen. Listen to me, Celia. The fact is, I love you. Yes, we know all this, Lionel. Please, the truth... please, please. I love you. I love you to a degree I never thought possible. I need you... And I want you, and I mean to have you. I love your voice. I love your eyes. I love your hair. I love your body. I love your hands and feet. I love all of you. I dream of you, Celia. I wake up and I'm hurting because I'm thinking of you so hard. It's a pain when I'm not with you. Nobody should be in that sort of pain. Nobody. Not for love. So I'm asking you, please... Please, because I'm not going to stop following you ever. You're more than just important. You're everything. You're the north, south, east, and west of my life. You're just the universe, Mrs. Teasdale. Oh, Lionel. Oh, dear Lionel. Nobody's ever said anything as beautiful as that to me. Ever. I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. You say yes, Lionel. 
best, please. No, it isn't as simple as that. It isn't. I wish it was. I'd love to be your universe. I really would. All you have to say is yes, that's all. That's not all. I have a husband, Lionel. I've got children. Husband? He doesn't love you. I've watched him. He doesn't love you. He doesn't care about you at all. Well, he does, Lionel. I think he does. He just doesn't make a great show of it. If I were married to you, whenever you step through that front door every morning and every evening, I'd be there to kiss your feet. Yes, well, that's not awfully practical, Lionel. Not once you're married. He doesn't love you. You tell me honestly that he loves you. Well... Honestly, he... can you swear that he loves you? No, not now. I don't know that he does. Right. Have a sandwich. Thank you. But what about the children? I've got two children. I couldn't abandon them. We can look after them. Oh, Lionel, they're terribly expensive. They're worse than a car. They need paying for endlessly. I mean, even if I worked, we'd we need could. To... We could do it. What? You mean you'd honestly take on two children that weren't even yours? We could cope. I'm good with kids. Oh, you're mad. Simple. I, I'd better clear this table. <laughs> uh, yes, we had a little rain earlier in the week, madam, but we've been very lucky these last couple of days. It's ridiculous, Lionel. You can't. Uh, is that a fact, madam? I didn't realise that. <laughs> no, no, no. Really, we couldn't. <laughs> oh, oh that, that's very good, madam. I hadn't heard that one. You know, nobody's ever said, ever, not me. Is that a fact? I'll say one thing. It's awfully nice to feel wanted. Yes, you want to look at the aquarium, madam, when you've got a minute. Oh, dear God, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Well, then there's the botanical gardens. I have a husband down there with a heart condition, Lionel. I should take him to see the dolphins, madam. And I'm walking out on him. And you'll have a great time. Mind you, he'll probably outlive us all. Do you know, I'm suddenly feeling terribly happy. It's most peculiar. I'm probably getting hysterical. You may have to slap me, Lionel. Oh, I couldn't do that, Mrs. Teasdale, not to a guest. I'm just... Terrifically excited. It's all so dangerous. Wait, we were kissing you, if you no, like. No, no, I don't think you would. No, we mustn't start that. Not here. Would you have another sandwich, then? Oh, Lord, I suppose so. Mm. How did you know we'd be staying here? I found out. How? Sylvie told me. Sylvie? She's still talking yeah, to you? There was nothing promised there. There never was. Only what she invented. Ah, she'll be all right. She'll find someone her level. Mm. She's a very shallow person. Stood next to you, Celia. Mm. Well, she's much younger. Oh, she's quite a little bit younger. I don't think she'll ever get much older, either. She's a narrow girl with narrow ideas who wants a narrow life, which mm. she'll no doubt get, but not from me. Poor yeah, Sylvia. Would you mind finishing that sandwich, Mrs. Tisdale? Lionel, I'm bursting. Just one or two more. Look, I think I'm going to have to put some in my bag. And if you can manage a swig of tea as well, I'd be yeah, grateful. Well, I'm certainly not pouring that in my bag. I'm sorry, Celia. It won't be a minute or two longer just while we arrange our plans. Mm. There we are, madam. Nice cup of tea. Bet you're just mm. about ready for that. Sorry, Mrs. Teasdale. He encourages to chat with the guests. Gives it a family feeling. It appears to be full of grandparents. A couple of these, madam. It's quite bizarre. Mm. This is presumably the most romantic few moments I'm ever going to have in my life. And I'm feeling faintly sick. Well, what plans have you got, then? What are our plans? Are we going ahead with the bakery? Bakery? Yes, we did discuss it once, didn't we? You were hoping to buy the old bakery. Well, I've been inquiring around a bit. I'm not so sure the demand's there. You aren't? No, you see, you're old-style, traditional Master Baker. I'm afraid he's a dying breed. I see. I've still got plans, though. Don't you worry, I've still got plans. Well, what are they? Would you mind telling me? I mean, I've just agreed to throw in my lot with you, Lionel. Perhaps we can share the future together. Well, there's a possible, vague, quite vague, but possible chance of ironmongery. Ironmongery? Yes, that's the new one. Are you an ironmonger as well? Well, let's put it this way. I'm familiar with ironmongery. I know the skills. I'm not foreign to the skills. My uncle was in the trade for a long time, and he passed it on to me before he died. Did he? That's a verbal tradition, you see. Most of the trades are. One ironmonger passes it on to the next. Yes. Yes. You don't sound too keen on that. Well, possibly. And then I had a thought. What about a greengrocer? Ah, yes, now that's an idea. Now, you always need a greengrocer, don't you? That's the good thing about them. No matter what you eat, you need a greengrocer. Yes, Sandwich. yes. Oh, thank you. But the slag there is that we've got to already in the village, so mm. maybe the market's a bit full, and that's a pity, because I do know quite a lot about greengrocery. Lionel, have you got any plans at all? Yes. What? It'd take too long, Mrs. Teasdale. I'd better clear these away. You haven't got the first idea about anything, have you? I have. I got plans this way, Mrs. Teasdale. Oh, all right, then. Where are we all going to live? What about a house? Supposing my husband chucks me out, which he's quite liable to do, where are we all going to live? That's my place. 
Oh. And it's a bit small, mind you. Is it? My father's there, you see, him in his wheelchair. Yes. He's a wonderful old man, you know. He taught me all I know. Did he? He's a poet. Yes, the point is, there's no room. Not really, that's what I'm saying. You also will have to find somewhere. Well, uh... I'm... I'm not complaining. I just want to know what the position is. Well, I, I was thinking... The other thing, you know, that did occur to me is of possibly becoming an estate agent. Then we'd be more or less guaranteed a house. Yes. You see, all you have to do, basically, and I know a little about this, is you open up your office, you see, and you sit there and you wait for someone to come in who wants to sell. Then you add a bit to what he's asking, stick it on your board and pocket the profit. That's a state agency. Well, I think that's the broad principle, Lionel. There's plenty open to me. I could even stop in the hotel trade, I suppose. Yes, yes, maybe you should. I have a feeling that they've got their eye on me for something bigger here. Do you? Yeah, I get that feeling. Nothing specific, you know. I just catch them now and again, looking at me, you know, weighing me up. <laughs> I mean, you don't rush into making someone manager, do you? Not without observing them for a bit. You know, Mrs. Teasdale, I feel like... like Goliath, you know? All my options open. You by my side. I knew this was going to be the day, Mrs. Teasdale. I just knew it. I feel... God, I feel like I just got a cup winner's medal, you know. Lovely. Well, what's the matter, then? It really isn't going to work, is it, Lionel? How do you mean? I think... I think the sort of woman you need... Is you? No. No. Is someone uncluttered, able to face things with you without slowing you down. I'm a born warrior, you see, Lionel. I can't get as excited as I know I should be getting about not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. I think I'm looking for a little excitement, possibly, but I don't think I could face an adventure. Oh, that's good. That's good. I think you're right. You ought to know. You need to know. A woman particularly needs to know. No, I don't think it's women particularly. It's just me. My father was a chemist. He had to be rather careful. I think I'm part of that particular verbal tradition. I could be a chemist. Not a lot to that. No, I'm sorry. Now, that is something I do know something about. You have to be very highly qualified to be a chemist. Very highly qualified indeed. I'm not saying you don't need to be qualified, but with all my A-levels, surely you I take it you'd like a bit of security, then? Yes. Right. I'll set that in motion. I'll get that organised right away. Oh, oh, I can see him looking round for me. Mr Hobjay. Oh, you better go. Uh, will you be telling him before this evening, your husband? I don't think so, Lionel, no. Well, I'll be standing by. I'll keep an eye on you. Give me the nod. Only it's my day off tomorrow, we could have had a look round at some properties. Yeah, farm's a possibility. We could possibly start farming. Yes. That'd be nice for the kids. Yes. Yeah, well, enjoy your tea. <laughs> Thank you. More of a half, really. The promenade they have here stretches for all of 150 yards. Breathtaking. As well worth the walk. Once you get to the other end, they've created one of the most striking examples of 20th century red brick toilet building I've ever set eyes on. It's worth picking your way through the rubbish just to look at it. Well, you've obviously been hard at it in my absence. We've left a few cakes here, have you noticed? Or are you just getting your fourth wind? Fifth wind. Well, what else can I tell you about my walk? <laughs> Nobody's hat blew off, I'm afraid. Very little excitement. <laughs> Look, we've always had a rather separate, a rather arm's length relationship, haven't we? <laughs> yes. And that seems to have suited us both quite well in the main. You've always chosen to undress in the bathroom, and I've always cut my toenails privately, and that's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. But it does occur to me, without in any way wanting to shatter that reassuring sliding glass patio door we have between us, 
that you appear to be in a bit of a state. Is there anything I can do to help you? Anything at all that doesn't entail going upstairs again? Can I help you out with some of these cakes? No, thank heaven for that. Handkerchief. That I can do for you. Just a tick. Here. Thank you. Your bag is full of sandwiches, did you know? Oh, you do. Afters, I. <laughs> Dear God, what a stupid ass of a woman I am, honestly. <laughs> Bloody hiccups go away. I could go and get our room key if you like, drop it down your neck. <laughs> Toby, I have to tell you, no point in trying to hide it. The point is, I just met... Who? Lionel. Lionel who? Lionel. God, this is an appallingly difficult conversation. It's like chatting to the Dead Sea Scrolls. I've just met Lionel Hepperwick. He followed us here somehow. He found out where we're staying and he's working here as a waiter. And that's the cause of all this, is it? Yes. Lionel Hepperwick. Yes. I see. <laughs> well, I told you he was mad. You were right. I never realized. You're being very calm. Am I? Yes, that's good. You mustn't get excited. That's the main... <laughs> I have to tell you that I'm fairly excited inside. Inside, I'm greatly tempted to go in there and beat him senseless. Very luckily for him, I have the wrong shoes on. Toby, I am sorry. I'm as much to blame as he was. I have to admit it. I did encourage him a little. <laughs> Celia, I'm prepared to forgive you practically anything. You are? If only you'll promise to stop hiccuping. I'm trying. I can't help them. <laughs> anyway, I don't think we want to start blaming each other. If you encouraged him, it was probably because I did very little to encourage you not to. I'll try and be a bit more understanding, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. It's just, it's difficult. Stow it! Have done the trick? Yes, I think it has. To break a lifetime habit, though. Yes, it has done the trick. Thank you. I've never really understood you, Celia. It's going to be extremely hard to start now, but I'll have a go. Are you going to plow on with this tea festival of yours, or have you finished? I've had quite enough, thank you. Hooray. Right. Coming in, then. I'll need you to carry me upstairs. Just a minute. I can't go in there looking like this. I don't know why not. I'm going in there looking like this. Yes, but you always look like that. You go on. I won't be a minute. I'll get the room key. Just don't order any more tea. No. Oh, oh what a mess. Oh, there. That's better. Have you finished, Mrs. Teasdale? Lionel, he didn't see you. No, I hid behind the trolley, Mr. Hobgey's trolley. Good. I bet you never had a tea like that before, Mrs. Teasdale. No, never. Nah, it's all right. I'm spreading the cost around. Nobody will notice. I'm very good with figures. Hey, that's another possibility. Accountancy. Yes. Have you told him yet? Uh, uh, no, N not yet. Lionel, it may be some time, some considerable time. Right, right. No, I mean ages, Lionel. Literally, ages and ages. All right? Right. You do understand? I do. Well, I hope you do. Ages. Right. I can wait, Mrs. Teasdale. I can wait. I am. 
You suddenly got up and went out. It just felt like some air, that's all. You felt peculiar again, didn't you admit it? You felt ill. Celia, I have not felt ill in five years. Now stop fussing around me, woman. You felt dizzy. Dizzy is not ill. Dizzy is dizzy, which is something totally different. One might describe you as dizzy, but I don't think you're ill. I wanted to come out. I got up very discreetly in the midst of that appalling cacophony and crept out. You cannot creep out of your headmaster. The whole school saw you, everyone turning round, wondering where you're going. I thought you must be seriously ill. Well, I'm not. So stop standing there like a piebald parakeet and go back in again. All right. It's quite a nice service, Toby. It really is. It's right. It's quite touching. Fifty years of the school since it was founded. It's not bad. Not bad. And there are three ex-headmasters there. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's not so good. Looking at that trio line up there, you wonder how the hell the place lasted 50 years. They're all charming men. Great characters. I wouldn't trust any of them to park my car. Pasty, wishy-washy, pastel liberals to a man. Toby, we are in church. We are not in church. We're in a churchyard, standing among a lot of dead people, none of whom can hear me. But if they could hear me, they'd all stand up and agree with me, because most of them are down there because of people like those three in there. I'm going back in. I'm not going to bother arguing with you. You? You wouldn't know how to argue with me. Well, I might just surprise you one day. You might. I doubt it. Parrots don't argue. They just repeat themselves. You have such contempt for me these days, haven't you? It's just sheer contempt. Maybe you've always had it, I don't know. And now you don't even bother to hide it. You, 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 you think I'm a fool. You think I'm just a, a comic turn, someone you could use for your stupid jokes and sarcastic remarks and whenever you want to show off. You're so busy scoring off me and belittling me, making me look that high in front of people. Well, I'm sick and tired of it, Toby. I'm just oh, sick to death of it and I'm not... Quietly, no, no, quietly, no, not quietly, quietly, Toby. To hell with you. I'm very sorry this is a churchyard, but to hell with you. You can make your stupid, bigoted, cruel jokes on someone else. I'm finished. That's it, finished. Goodbye. Celia. Celia. Oh, she'll be back. <sighs> back to boring old Fognor. I'm not going back this time. I'm not going back this time. I'm really not. Mrs. Teasdale? Hmm? Hello? It's Lionel, Mrs. Teasdale. Lionel Hathaway. L Lionel? So it is. I didn't recognize you. Well, I, uh, it's been a long time. Yes. Oh, it's five years. Right. I meant to arrive for the service, only the traffic's very bad. Oh, was it? Have you had to come far? North London. Oh, I see. I didn't want to miss the service because, well, I, I still feel a little bit part of the school somehow. Ah, and, of course, for my dad. He was ten, fifteen years ago. Oh, yes, indeed he was. I'm sorry he... Yes, for the best, though. Bird just over there. Yes. So, obviously a lot's been happening to you. Quite a bit. Looks as if you're doing quite well. Yes, yes, can't complain. I, well, after I last saw you that time at the hotel, I think you made me realise, Mrs. Teasdale, that I needed to do some thinking about myself. Yes. Half of me wanted to carry on hoping you'd, you know, change your mind. But I saw you and your husband were a lot closer, really, than I thought you were. It's very easy to read things into people's relationships, isn't it, if you're on the outside? Well, especially if you want those things to be there. But, of course, it wasn't like that. You were both perfectly happy. No way were you going to leave him for me. Why should you? You know, when he had that heart thing, Mrs. Teasdale, I wanted him to die. Isn't that terrible? I really wanted him to. Well, he's very much alive. Yeah, I'm glad for you. So anyway, I met this other fellow who was a waiter with me at the hotel, and he suggested we set up this taxi firm together, because he knew we could grab the hotel trade, you see. So we got this car between us, got a license, and off we went. Drove it 24 hours a day between us. A couple of years, we had three or four people, and then we started a van. A little bit of moving here, a little bit of moving there, you know. Got a few more vans. Now we're in rental. Just this year. Got a couple of dozen of them. We keep growing. Heaven! It moves fast, my partner. I'm... Well, I'm very impressed. 
I'm really glad to see you, Mrs. Teasdale. I'm pleased to see you, Lionel. You haven't changed? You have. I should hope so. Oh, I, uh, I did bring you something. I suddenly saw this, and I thought it would like this. Here. Oh. It's a cassette. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hope you got something to play it on. Uh, yes. Yes, I think I can get hold of something. That's Symphony Number no. 4 by Carl Nielsen. You remember? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. He called it The Inextinguishable. Sort of remind me of you, you know. Inextinguishable. Oh, it looks lovely. Thank you. I had a brought the wife down on. She's not feeling too well today. Why? Yeah, she's seven months pregnant. She didn't feel like the journey. Oh, I see. This will be our second. We got one little girl, Cheryl Jean. Oh, lovely. I've driven them down for the ride, but the car, you know, makes her feel a bit sick when she's expecting. Oh. She's very nice. I think they'd like her. She was an air stewardess. She was. Oh. She's Norwegian. Oh. I'll bring her down next time. Yes. I have to keep an eye on her if I do, all the lads around here. Yeah. I know what they're like with big tall blondes falling over themselves. Yes. <laughs> well, I suppose we'd better go in, catch the end. I parked the car there. Be all right, would it? Uh, yes, yes, it should be. Oh, it looks a nice car. Yeah, BMW. Nice, isn't it? New. Yes. You coming in? In a moment. Right. See you after, perhaps. Right. Good to meet you again, Miss Teasdale. Stupid, stupid woman. Oh, dear. In Events on a Hotel Terrace by Alan Aitbourne, Robin Herford was Toby Teasdale and Lionel Heppelwick, and Lavinia Bertram, Celia Teasdale and Sylvie Bell. This, the first of four intimate exchanges, was originally produced at the Stephen Joseph Theatre in the Round at Scarborough by Alan Aitbourne. The sound balance was by Chris Lewis. This BBC World Service drama production was adapted for radio by Richard Wigmore, the piano music was arranged and played by Marilyn Phillips, and the director was Gordon House. <laughs>